up, nation? Hope you're having an awesome Tuesday. My name is Philip DeFranco, and this is where I talk about news and type stuff and things that matter to me today. Hopefully, uh, in a way, a little bit of... And a quickie update before we jump into everything. The License to Carry Small Arms poster is finally available. So if you want to get the signed, unsigned version, link to it down below. But enough of your request stuff, I just make it. And also for those of you that are like, where are the Table Talk videos? Those are on, on this channel. They're on my other channel, SourceFed. I post one every day right before the PDS. The link to that down below. But enough blah 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 blah. Let's jump into the first story of the day. Ah, and Nation, the first thing I want to talk about today is police officer Charles Ziegler. And it's funny because when I say police officer, insert name here, you automatically probably go to the negative. It's like, oh God, what a cop. Oh, did he go into someone else's house? They got the address wrong. He like shot someone's dog. Did he like tase a college student? Did he beat an autistic person to death again? And I think we think that because most of the time when cops are in the news is because they messed up. But then people like Charles Ziegler are in the news. He's a police officer in Winston-Salem. He saw a mom, you know, taking her kid home in a stroller. It was freezing rain. He had been working security at a church, he was leaving, and he was like, oh, I'm gonna take this woman home. And as that happened, someone happened to take a picture. And whoa, it blew up on Facebook, it was on the local news, it was on national news. And so when the media finally found this guy, like, he had kind of the same response as, like, what I thought. I am not trying to belittle anyone, but I think this story is being made more than it actually is. Cops across the state and across the nation, they do stuff like this all the time. Now, I've never had a bad or, like, abusive instance with the police, but I'm also a white guy. Like, I'm not a young 20-something black male who's probably persecuted by the LAPD. But I do want to stress a few things. One, there are are good cops out there. And two, we need to remember the reason that we see bad cops on TV all the time is because that needs to not be a thing. They tarnish the badge. And three, how sad is it once again that someone is like, they're a hero because they did what any semi-decent human being should do. And I don't want to take away from Ziegler. He seems like an awesome guy, but it's like giving someone a medal because I don't, they didn't beat their wife. It's like, oh, we know how much Debbie can talk. Good job, man. Good jo I just, we don't know how you did it. It just makes me happy and sad at the same time. Then, for a little car porn, I'd like to introduce you to the $4.5 million Lamborghini Veneno. It's a V12 capable of going from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.8 seconds. There will only be three made, and if I had to guess, one of them would have to be a supervillain. Or the car itself is a supervillain. Look at it. It looks like the evil version of something else. Then in surprising but badass news, Harrison Ford is joining the new Anchorman movie. And then there was a new Iron Man 3 trailer that came out today, and I, you don't have to come out with new trailers. I'm, I just, I will give you my money now. But if you haven't seen it, the trailer is worth to watch. It's got some old footage, it's got some new footage, and then the Iron Army! Then, because a good number of you demanded it after I didn't do it for a few episodes, the Instagram hottie of the day is Miss Liana Decker. She's a 21-year-old red-headed model from Kentucky who also happened to be Playboy Cyber Girl of the Year 2012. She also loves animals as much as she hates clothes, so those are things. If you want to check out the fantastic Miss Decker, uh, link to it down below, but also a question with this. Do you have a favorite hair color of the sex that you are attracted to? This is for men and women. Like, I've always had kind of a thing for red heads, but that's because I'm also into crazy girls? Let me know. Then, let's talk about how it is illegal to unlock your cell phone. Now, that's not news. We've talked about it in the past. The Library of Congress allowed an exemption in the DMCA to expire, effectively making it illegal to unlock your cell phone after January 26th of this year. Many people became angry, I imagine, because it's fracking stupid, and uh, 114,000 of them signed a petition to the White House to go like, hey, WTF, can you help us out? And today, in awesome news, the White House said that, yes, we are supporting ending the ban. But guys, bad news, we can't do anything about it. The White House writing, the White House agrees with the 114,000 plus of you who believe that consumers should be able to unlock their cell phones without risking criminal or other penalties. In fact, we believe the same principle should apply to tablets, which are increasingly similar to smartphones. And if you have paid for your mobile device and aren't bound by a service agreement or other obligation, you should be able to use it on another network. It's common sense. Okay, well, who can do something? Well, okay, what about what about the Library of Congress? What did they say? Well, they also released a statement that kind of makes you squint and go, what? Saying, we also agree with the administration that the question of locked cell phones has implications for telecommunications policy, and that it would benefit from review and resolution in that context. Or in simpler but just as vague words, uh, the things that you said do affect stuff, so we are going to at some point in the near future possibly look at the things that do affect stuff. But what they're all really saying is, yeah, you should own the things that you bought. You paid money for it and then ended your contract, whether by cancellation and then paying fees or like you waited it out. And somehow in the ignorance that is sluggish governments, you can't modify your own property. But someone should totally get on that at some point. Then in badass tech Tech News researchers at Brown University have succeeded in creating the first wireless, implantable, rechargeable, long-term brain computer interface. Ah! 
<laughs> Wireless BCIs have been implanted in monkeys and pigs over the past 13 months, and human testing is the next step, and it, it's really, really exciting. So what is this thing that could potentially be in someone's brain? Well, it's this little thing that looks like a pacemaker, and it digitizes your brain signals and transmits them to a computer. So not only could this be used by researchers, scientists, to get high quality, rich signals from the brain, but it could help those that are disabled. As of now, it's been limited to these giant devices attached to a person, and you can see this guy is like drawing a circle by just thinking of drawing a circle. And this woman that was able to feed herself even though her own body could not do it. It was it was attached to her brain and the, the technology is advancing. But then as the technology advances, what's the next step? Are you talking about transhumans? People that get elective surgery and then can control things with their mind? It sounds crazy, but you look at this and you go well, like, wow, this is just like how it is now. Technology could give us superheroes. And then we have more North Korea news, yay! It seems that Dennis Rodman visiting North Korea has not stopped anything. I just thought it would somehow help, said no one ever. Today, North Korea vowed to cancel their 1953 ceasefire, which kind of ended the Korean War, but not really. Technically, they're still in a state of war. But they cited the reason for this being the US-led push for punishing United Nations sanctions over its recent nuclear tests, and the ongoing US-South Korea military drill. And that draft of the sanctions will be circulating in the UN this week. North Korea added, we aim to launch surgical strikes at any time and any target without being bound and advance our long cherished wish for national unification. But the main thing that I see is just, it's more threats, more threats. It's just a lot of the same from North Korea. The only thing that's different, there are more nuclear tests right now. It's really just a question of how long will China back and like help North Korea, its little buddy. Because as of right now, I think that there are a lot of Americans that are just tired of war. Afghanistan, Iran, we haven't felt like there was a real bad guy since 9-11. And then in walks Kim Jong-un, a tiny little bitch of a man who has daddy issues, a Napoleon complex, who gives himself titles like it's gonna add inches to his little dick. Just be careful what you wish for. And Asian, the last thing we have to talk about today is at the age of 58, Hugo Chavez is dead. The self-described champion of the poor and the president of Venezuela since 1999 died after battling cancer for two years. We learned this from Vice President Nicolas Maduro after many people had been protesting, demanding to know how Chavez was. And the reactions have been all over the place. Some people sad, obviously Chavez was a huge thorn in America's side, so a lot of people happy. But the main thing I wonder now is what will happen with US-Venezuela relations? Will it start new conversations? Will it open doors? Or will it be like Kim Jong-il to Kim Jong-un? Same thing, different day. We'll see, and if you had an opinion on Chavez, let me know what it was and why. But Nation, that's really everything I wanted to talk about. It brings us to the question of the day today, which is, do you think we should ever limit human advances? Like, do, do you get freaked out by the idea of transhumans? Do you think there are things science should not do if you think, yeah, that science should stop? Why? If you say no, keep it going. Why? Let me know. And remember to possibly get pelted with stuff from my website, forhumanpeoples.com. Leave a comment down below. Join the conversation. Maybe hit the like button, favorite if you really like it. And a big thanks to the sponsor of today's show, netflix.com slash phillyd. Use that URL. You get a free month of instant streaming movies. But, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.